Would you like to hear a wee clip of a room full of mathematicians so proud of themselves because they actually managed to count to the number five? One, two, three, four, five, one. time favorite vocal warm-ups. So you're counting to the number five, but you're doing it over a very heavy 4-4 four, four vamp beat. As you go through it, you hold the five for two beats until you get to the third bar where you use up every single possible half beat. So there's eight half beats in this 4-4 four, four bar. Um, you've got eight numbers to go through. And so you end up running through five and then using three from the next section, which kind of shoves the line after over a little bit and kind of moves it out of sync. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. It's all one bar. And then for the next bar, you're starting on four, five, one, two, three. And I just love how it processes along, but maybe not in the way that you might think. So on the first round, um, the emphasis, the start of the bar is on that number one, one, two, three, four, five. But then once you've worked it through once, you end up starting on the four, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Where do you think it's gonna go next? Four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one two, three, four, five, one. So we've gone from one to four to two. So it's kind of jumping around all over the place. And you can probably predict that after 20 bars, because you're counting to five in a four, four beat, it will resolve, it will come back to the beginning because 20 is the lowest common multiple between four and five. But there is a really beautiful way to visualize the procession of which number you are going to put the emphasis on, which number starts the bar um, in each round. So if we just draw a five pointed star, keeping it all connected and numbering the points as we go along, we can then follow through our little vocal warm up. See if you can notice a pattern with the, the numbers that we start on. Let's go through it fully. If you are in a safe and happy environment where you feel free to express yourself, please do have a go at this. Um, it's silly. You will hopefully probably make a mistake. I make mistakes with this. It's fun. It's what we're here for. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five. 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 One, two, three. Four, five, 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 one. Two, three, four, five, one. Two, three, four, five, one. Two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Five, one, two, three, four. Five, one, two, three, four. Five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. Three, four, five, one, two. Three, four, five, one, two. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Yes! <laughs> So obviously I then have to think about other star polygons representing this. Now, when you have six points and you try and join those together as a star, we can do this in a kind of logical order. If you go one vertex over, you're just drawing a hexagon. If you go two vertices over, so kind of miss one, join, miss one, join, miss one, join. What ends up happening is you create two triangles. Now, it's up to you and your definition whether you're gonna count that as a star polygon or not. It is a degenerate case, and I live for degenerate cases. This happens because six and two are not co-prime. Uh, two is a factor of six. And you can think of this musically, um, there's the little trick that you can do where you click in three, and also at, in two at the same time, and you end up after six, just exactly where you started. So I'm gonna start up the top here, and my left hand, I'm gonna click in two, and in my right hand, I'm gonna click in three, and after six beats, we will end up back up here where we started. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Oh, I guess like because the sixth one finishes it off and then you're back to where you started. One, two, three, four, five, six, back to where we started. Did I shoehorn that in to show off something that took me four hours to learn? Maybe. <laughs> But seven is where star polygons get interesting because if you have seven points around a circle, this is the first time where you have two different options for your star polygon. Like we said before, if you just go one vertex over, you are just drawing a heptagon, septagon. But if you go two vertices over, so in star polygon notation, this would be like curly brackets and then seven slash two, seven points and I'm kind of moving along in two. You would get a star polygon which looks like this but there is another one because if you do seven points and you skip along three, you get a much more pointy star polygon, which looks like this. Now you could then go and ask about what, what if we skip four? And you should ask, but if you're working in a round and you count along four, it is the same as counting back three. And now we're in the realm of modular arithmetic. So positive four and minus three are the same thing, you will end up with the same star polygon because of symmetry. So this set me on a mission because there should be some sort of like rhythm or beat or something that I can do where I'm counting to the number seven but over a 4-4 four, four beat and I want to process along the edges of the star. So same setup as before, I've labelled my vertices in the connected way following along the star and you can see for the, the shallow heptagon star um, I want to start on one and then in the next round I should be starting on five and then two um, and I kind of work my way around. Now I wish that I could find a different song that this worked for and apologies but the only one I can find, please 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 someone in the comments go and find another song that this works for, it's Happy Birthday which luckily is no longer owned by Warner Brothers so no copyright strike for me. And then the next issue that you run into is in the English language the word seven has two syllables. So I'm um, kind of faced with a couple of options. I could use the Gallic word, schacht, um, but I can't go fully Gallic because in Gallic the word for, keher, has also two syllables. Would love to know if there are any languages where all of the single digits have a single syllable. So my options here are to abbreviate it to sev or I'm gonna go Shakespearean and I'm gonna kind of apostrophe that V and just make it sen. <laughs> So we use the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so to the tune of happy birthday, let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, Four, five, six, and one, two, three, 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 four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah! So now the next one would start on six, and we're just kind of working our way around. I feel like at this point I have proved the concept and you do not need to hear me singing that anymore. <laughs> Except you do because there's that whole second star. Now if you are one of those people like me with a three syllable name, A. Lee Ann, there's always that awkward moment when people are singing happy birthday to you where they go happy birthday dear alien. Um, they have to kind of cram it in. If we do that but we count to the number seven, it will give us the other type of star polygon for seven points. I do also kind of like that it forces a dear alien, that is a, a scotch snap. It's like a cool rhythmic thing. Da -dun, da -dun. Okay, let's go. Second kind of star polygon. We're just counting to the number of seven to the tune of happy birthday to your friend who has a three syllable name. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, one, two, three, four, five. Hey, now we start on six. We work our way around. 
Okay, the next one should start on four. Six and one, two, three, four. Five, six and one, two, three. Four, five, six and one, two, three, four. Five, six and one, two, three. Yes, and we start on four. And we keep processing all the way round. But you don't need to hear that. Now, I do often kind of shy away from these sort of maths is music and music is maths discussions um because they're not is it maths is it music it's kind of both and neither at the same time and that's because the intention really matters so if you start looking at star polygons and modular arithmetic yes it came from a musical stimulus but you are now doing maths because you chose to do maths Edit Alien here. This was a very long-winded way of saying that maths and music are symbiotic, but they are not the same, and I feel like sometimes people try and equate them to up the rep of maths, but they're both awesome in their own right. What we've essentially come to is what I feel is the main overlap between maths and music. They are fun, beautiful, they are tough, they involve practice. Every so often you want to quit but you feel it in your soul that you want to do it. And I think that this comes from a shared feeling of flow. Flow is a kind of mind state described by um, Austrian, I believe, psychologist Mikhail Csikszentmihalyi. And I really hope that you have achieved a sense of flow at some point in your life, but both maths and music and things like um, martial arts, juggling, they encourage a state of flow where you're kind of like, I got this. I, I worked hard, I practiced, and now <laughs> I got this. This is like flow. Um, it feels good. And that I think is the overlap between maths and music. And I feel happy saying that. If you like doing both of them, the overlap is you. So I'm gonna finish up with a silly thing, but I started this year over new year, um, isolating because I had COVID. And to cheer myself up, I was just messing around on Polypad and they have a function where, well, I'll explain it. This is so silly, I'm so proud of myself. So this program is, yeah, it's supposed to be for learning maths. And it's got some cool functions, you know, like this net thing here is pretty neat. It even has aperiodic monotiles and this beautiful fraction mm. wall. Ooh. Now, a lot of people really don't like fractions, and I think they're misunderstood because fractions are the basis for, like, all rhythm. And so it makes sense that they added a function where you can play the fractions to hear what they sound like. So you can have things like two against three, which sounds like this. Or you could try out three against four, see what that sounds like. But they also added a function where you can change the tone, and I've been stuck in bed isolating with COVID for three days. So here is Through the Fire and the Flames by Dragon Force, played on um, fractions. <laughs> was a sucky way to start the year. Covid is very much still real and if you're in the UK it is on the rise so I hope that you have an excellent summer. Try not to ruin anyone else's summer and make sure that summer is accessible to other people. Um, there's nothing wrong with going back to masking even if you didn't mask for a while. There is never any better time than now to do the right thing. As with the past couple of weeks, uh, this has been my entry for the big internet math off. When this video goes up right now, you can go and click on that link and check out both pitches and vote for whichever one you enjoy the most. Uh, it's gonna be a tough one for me. I'm up against Dr. Angela Tabiri. I'm very excited to see what they do. But yes, this may be my time to get knocked out. Like I say, check out both pitches and vote for whichever one gives you the most math satisfaction. I don't even know what to say about the patrons. I'm humbled. 
<laughs> Thank you for trusting me to do cool maths with your money. I will do my best. I have a Discord, it's for everyone. There's nothing on there right now, but we can get it going. I have some plans, put some cool stickers and stuff. Okay, stay nerdy, bye.